Okay, we're live. We'll just wait a few seconds to see a couple of people to come on to the screen. Sana's enjoying herself there. Headphones <laughs> 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 falling out at the right time. Um, okay, we've got a couple of people watching now. So, um, hi, I'm Jake Morrison. I'm the Chief Executive at Sit and Device Woking Gum. And this is uh, another one of our weekly live streams that we've been trialing now for the last two weeks. And this one will be all about what is Sit and Device Woking Gum, because we know that lots of people have different impressions and understandings of the work that we do. Um, so this is our opportunity for some of our colleagues who will introduce themselves in a moment to talk about their work. Um, but if you have any questions throughout this session, then please do post them in the comments section and we'll bring them up on the screen and answer them. And if you're watching this afterwards, because we do put the recording on our website, uh, which I'm just going to put below, if you want to see the rest of them, then please just go on there, um, watch them and leave comments on the Facebook page and someone will come back to you at some point um, soon. So let me introduce or let you introduce yourselves and we'll go along with Roz. Hello, my name's Roz and I'm uh, currently working with Citizen Advice Wokingham as a volunteer assessment supervisor and also as a research and campaign coordinator. Um, I've been with Citizen Advice for about 10 years and I've moved through various roles um, from reception advisor and now I'm doing the assessment work and um, research and campaigns lead volunteer. William Rob. Hi, uh, my name's uh, Rob. Uh, I've been with uh, Citizens Advice at Wokingham for just coming up to uh, to five years. In fact, I think this year is my uh, this month is my uh, uh, birthday month. Uh, I'm, I'm an employment advisor, so uh, I provide advice to clients who have uh, specific requirements around more complex employment uh, employment issues. Uh, I also am a lead advisor, and we have a we've recently formed a small group of other advisors who are looking to specialise in employment issues. So we're more resilient. So I also uh, mentor uh, uh, others who want to develop their employment knowledge. So that's my role. And thank you, and Sarah. Yeah, hello. Uh, so I, my name's Sarah and I'm a trustee uh, for the charity um, and that means I'm a member of the board and our role as the board is to set the general um, high level strategic direction and also to make sure that we're legally compliant as a charity, that we have all the policies and, and those kinds of things in place. Um, and then in addition to that, it is really about making sure that the, all the staff and volunteers, that you all have everything you need to be able to do the fantastic work that you do and the roles that you do. Um, so uh, we're, we're sort of overseeing it um, and making sure that, that you're supported. Brilliant. Persona? Yeah, hi, I'm Persona. I've uh, been uh, working as a um, assessor since uh, nearly two years now, uh, more than two years. And I'm training to be an advisor. Um, yeah, I haven't chosen any particular uh, uh, section, but uh, uh, probably I would be a general advisor. Um, and uh, recent, uh, due to recent changes and lockdown, I'm doing a bit of a triaging as well. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Persona. And Nikki. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Fall. I'm the training manager. Um, so I have been with Citizens Advice overall for seven years. Five years of that was volunteering and almost two years now as a training manager at Wokingham. Um, I am in charge of recruitment, so I recruit all the, the, the volunteers. I uh, put them through the training um, advisor path and I also facilitate training. So I um, put together some training sessions, ongoing training sessions for our existing volunteers. And uh, it's great to work with so many volunteers. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, we've just had a comment through on our Twitter page, I think, from someone saying lawyers with a question mark. And that's obviously a question that we get asked all the time. So does someone want to answer whether you are lawyers or not? Uh, well, shall I pick that up from an employment uh, uh, perspective? So uh, although we do offer employment advice, I am not a qualified lawyer. By way of background, I worked in HR for about uh, uh, 20 years, so I'm a poacher turned uh, gamekeeper, uh, as it were. So although we, we, we aren't uh, qualified lawyers, nevertheless, within uh, uh, citizen advice, uh, if, they, if things are complicated, 
We do have working at National Citizens Advice, a small expert advice team where there are, for instance, on employment, there are three qualified employment lawyers. So we've got the opportunity there to get additional advice if we feel uh, if we feel we we need it. So, uh, no, we're not uh, qualified lawyers, uh, but we do have a pretty good working knowledge of the areas we cover. Brilliant. Thank you, Rob. And Nikki, what, what sort of training do people do then to become part of Sitting to Vice? Um, so no one really needs any experience to start as a volunteer because all the training does cover it. Um, so depending on the role, um, the induction is for everyone. So we have an induction where everyone learns more about citizens' advice, their background, what we do. Certainly the areas around um, the inquiry areas uh, we talk about, but in terms of just picking up from Rob, um, the law part is that yes, we're not lawyers or anything of that kind, but we do know um, how um, clients, people can actually look up their rights and responsibilities when it comes to any situation. So that's certainly some an area that we are qualified in, in terms of uh, referring um, clients to. We do also have um, um, local solicitors that do pro bono work for us, so we can refer clients to them at times as well. Um, so in terms of the, the training, there's uh, benefits units, employment, debt, um, all that is online and uh, everyone reads through those packs and we could do some interactive classroom work or now at the moment virtual classroom work. Um, and it's always ongoing, so it doesn't stop right from the um, the beginning, it continues as I'm sure Prasanna and Rob and, and Roz will um, let you know later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I could just add a, another comment, although we, we aren't lawyers, we do help uh, uh, clients, if I'm again talking on uh, in the employment area, we do help uh, uh, clients go through the litigation process, uh, which in terms of employment means taking uh, than uh, their cases to employment tribunals. So we are capable of supporting clients all the way to uh, employment tribunals and have had a number of successful outcomes doing that. So even though we might be facing up against lawyers who are representing what we call the respondents, uh, we're, we're more than capable of supporting litigation. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll come on to talk about some of your great success stories, uh, Rob, particularly from the employment side. <laughs> Uh, and we'll keep people in suspense on that one. Yeah. I think it's worth pointing out in terms of what is Sitting's advice that that we do provide free um, confidential advice and information on on a wide range of areas, which again we'll we'll talk about, I'm sure, throughout this conversation. But uh, certainly, um, and again, Sarah, obviously, uh, with the trustee board, we'll be able to talk more about the role of the trustee board soon. But the business plan that the boards have set, working in conjunction with our staff and volunteers, is to be the go-to charity. Roz, do you want to answer that phone on the call or should we all listen in? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's, it's, it's to be the go-to charity. So we, we want to make sure that people, uh, anyone who is in need of help, anyone who, who needs to help to find a way forward just comes to us. And then that is the role of the assessors of which Persona and Roz are part of that team. Again, we'll talk about that throughout this conversation. Mm -hmm. But anyone who has any problems with their working on Borough should just reach out to us, make contact with us, and our team will triage you. Um, we can we are made up majorly of volunteers. So at the moment, we have around 87 volunteers as part of our team. They're supported by 10 part-time staff. And we have, I think it's eight trustees at the moment. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, please don't yeah. correct me if I'm wrong anyway, because that's yeah. going to no, look you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. And that's that's what makes up that wider team. Rob, was you gonna? No, I, I was just going to come in uh, again. Uh, sorry, on the on the lawyer question, and uh, uh, Jake me mentioning that our our service is absolutely free. A lot of the uh, clients who come to see us on employment issues have already perhaps gone to uh, uh, employment lawyers and simply can't afford the uh, can't afford the. Uh, the fees or they've spent you know hundreds if not thousands of pounds run out of money and they've come to to see uh see us so yeah uh just to reinforce uh what we're able to to offer and the fact that somebody might have been to a lawyer before doesn't mean that we wouldn't talk to them or pick their case up absolutely uh, and it feels like a good opportunity to bring up uh, a very nice comment here from amber with a very lovely profile picture um thank you for doing a fantastic <laughs> job 
and device and public lucky to have you, which is great. But again, I think that the great thing about being sitting device welcome gum is it's made up uh, majorly of people living in our communities, people living across welcome gum. So we are also part of that public and part of that community. Um, I wanted to ask you all a, a question um, of why did you get involved in sitting device? Because you obviously again all have different roles, but why? Why why did you choose sitting device? I'm going to go in reverse order this time. So, Nikki and Roz, can you turn your phone off? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Nikki. I found it. Um, yeah, I joined Citizen Citizens Advice um, after a 10 year gap from work because uh, I was concentrating on um, uh, my, my family. And I wanted something where I could volunteer, but I'll be learning as much as I'll be giving. And it looked like the, the perfect place um when i when i researched what i could volunteer for so i'm glad that i attended the open day at that time understood what the work was about and then uh, pursued it brilliant thank you persona yeah uh, hi um i was uh, working in a educational setting and then uh, just thought of uh, taking a break uh, from career so yeah, I've uh, been at home for a while, for a couple of years now. So when I was looking for some volunteering, so I think uh, it was the working and volunteer center. So I came across Citizens Advice. Um, that time I didn't know anything about Citizens Advice. <laughs> and um, yeah, I uh, went through the training. I thought I know everything. But uh, yeah, every time when I see a client or talk to a client over the phone, it's always something new. It's, it's, Absolutely everything. Every time you learn something new, and at the same time, uh, we try to share the that information with the client. Hopefully, you know that uh, helps them. And uh, mm, yeah, that's what I come to. And yeah, end of the day, it's uh, the satisfaction of uh, you know helping someone going who are going through their you know issues in life. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Like yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Persona and Sarah. You sure? yeah. I think you're on new with on the call. You must be. Yeah, I, I didn't say actually, did I? I don't think I'll introduce myself. So yeah, obviously I've been a trustee since uh, the towards the end of last year. Um, at this organisation, I'd, I'd previously been a trustee somewhere else. But I think for me, it, it being a trustee, um, I, I choose to do that. I, I'm also a volunteer as a, as a trustee. Over the phone is, um, is because oh, could hear another voice then. <laughs> someone communicating with me uh -huh. um, yeah so uh, you know I, I run my own business um, I have a, a family of my own who as you've just seen ignore me completely when I say stay mm -hmm. out of the room <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll just sneak behind no one will know it's going very well today <laughs> isn't it that's the point we're only 10 minutes into the disaster <laughs> I think yeah I think she thinks if she creeps you know she won't be seen mm -hmm. um, but anyway yeah so my, my other commitments mean that that sort of committing to a weekly shift pattern or, or something like that is, is not something I, I am able to do um, obviously as a trustee there is a commitment it does take time there are quite a lot of things that we get involved in but it's not in quite the same regular pattern um, so for me it's about being able to kind of contribute being part of as you said Jake you know I we, we are in the community ourselves I mean I live in Woodley um, it, it's something I'm, I'm part of and being able to help people who you know for all sorts of reasons need some support some advice um and knowing that that you know we, we we have the numbers of people that we help but actually they are people they are families they are individuals they are you know hopefully after speaking to us they could go to bed at night feeling a little bit less frightened and a bit less alone and for me you know being part of a team um, and we are a team, um, a virtual team <laughs> at the moment. We're all working from home, but nevertheless, there's, there is that real sense, I think, in, in waking up of a, a team spirit, which is is good to be part of. Brilliant. Thank you. And Rob? Uh, yeah, I uh, I knew a little bit about uh, citizens advice because uh, my wife was already working as a, an assessor uh, and had done for a number of years. And then... Uh, when I retired, I think the uh, employment advisor who was around at the time had uh, himself retired for a second time. And so she suggested I came along and um, found out a little bit more about it. And obviously, with my background in HR, during my working career, I'd often helped friends, colleagues out with, uh, with issues and also realized that you know, people do need a voice. They do need an advocate, somebody who can articulate and speak for them. Uh, and I can always remember 
when I worked in HR on the company side, often feeling that uh, people didn't have that, always have that advocate uh, to, to, to voice their points of view. So I always felt there was an opportunity to, uh, to help people. So that's how I came into it. And then, yes, you just, uh, I think uh, Nikki mentioned, it's the opportunity to learn. And you, you even though I've been working in this area, uh, every case is an opportunity to learn. And if, you, if you're interested in, in learning, continuing to find out about uh, things, then obviously uh, we provide that. There's, uh, you know, every case that you deal with, is, there's a new challenge in it. Every person you deal with, there's a challenge. And so that's what brought me into it and that's why i continue i suppose to enjoy the work that we uh that we do brilliant thank you rob and that feels a good opportunity to always promote our volunteer and opportunities so i'll leave that up below um Roz. hi um yeah when i went i retired um i wanted to find a new, new activity learn new skills um my eldest sister was a volunteer at citizens of ice when it was first started in wokeham town hall i believe it was wow. um so yeah um so I started as a receptionist and then went on to become an assessor, telephone assessor, and then an advisor. And all that time, I was amazed at how many problems there were out there that I wasn't aware of and that people needed help. Um, sometimes because they weren't able to comprehend vast complexity as a world outside. Um, and it was just wonderful to be able to help them. All through my time at Citizen Advice, everyone, the staff has been very helpful, very supportive. The training has been second to none and it doesn't stop. You don't just say, oh, I've trained, therefore things stop. You are constantly learning, constantly training. Um, in my role as research and campaigns coordinator, um, this is going then beyond the assessment case you take because when you take and talk to several people, you can see emerging some injustices, things that don't aren't quite right across a whole stream of things like benefits, housing, energy, whatever you deal with in life, there's always an issue there that could be dealt with better. Uh, and this is where we gather evidence from our clients with their permission, of course. And this is then goes to National Citizens Advice. They collate all that information and they will then lobby the government um, as and when appropriate, and changes have been made um, regarding this. One of the examples I can think of is where some um, chargeable telephone numbers to call benefit agencies have been changed to free um, mm -hmm. call numbers. That's just one little tiny thing. There are, I could sit here and talk all day about what else mm -hmm. there could be done. Um, and currently we're working um, with the council on the council tax protocol, and they've put uh, information on their council tax leaflets uh, about citizens advice we're talking about um, tenants voice about helping tenants who are getting unfair treatment from their landlord um, we're talking about emergency accommodation charter with the council about making sure any temporary accommodation is up to a certain in standards includes things like bedding cooking facilities etc etc um, so that's just a small part I, I have a team um, that are on the Research and Campaigns Committee, and uh, it's very active. Thank you. And you make your, you you decide on local initiatives, don't we? Yes, so so yes. we choose local campaigns. Yes. So we absolutely we yes. contribute nationally, but but on some matters that are more relevant to local borough, we absolutely. would then yeah absolutely take up some of those issues yeah. there. Currently, it's a national thing. We're doing the scam awareness week, so keep mm -hmm. a look out for posters and everything. Absolutely. And on social media as well, we'll definitely put them out. So so there, one of the other points to, to mention is that we are one of 270 sit and device services across uh, England and Wales, and there's a sit and device Scotland as well. Uh, so we then make up the National Sit and Device Service as a, as a membership organisation. Uh, and we have two aims of which Roz has just mentioned one of them. And one of them is to use the information, the data that we have from the clients that we support to influence change. So to influence change through the cases that we see, try and understand whether there are any you know, mishaps there, anything that we need to use to influence government. Um, are you all right there, Sarah? <laughs> um, that's why I locked my door behind me, by the way. Um, I might try that another time. <laughs> I, gave, uh, I, gave, I gave mine a big... 
I'm whining. So that's one of our aims, but but the other aim is to give that free, impartial, confidential advice and information. So I just want to quickly talk about, before we move on to our, our next question, we've got some comments as well that I'll, I'll go through about some of the work that we do do. So we essentially have our core service. And when we say core, it's just our bread and butter. It's the, it's the, it's the work we do day in, day out. Uh, and we've integrated that with our one front door offer, which personas touched upon with the triage so at the moment during the coronavirus pandemic you can get in touch with us six days a week Monday to Saturday so we've got team on the phones at the moment answering calls uh, and they're on uh, Monday to Saturday 9 a.m to 5 p.m and effectively they are assessing your situation so they will ask you certain questions they will obviously give you the opportunity to talk about what your issue is but quite often someone will come in about something and I always use the example of a food bank voucher so we get asked quite often for food bank vouchers but we would probably never send you away just with a food bank voucher we would do an assessment we would talk to you about your circumstances again Ross would be able to talk about this better than me but we will try and understand your benefit situation look at benefits maximization we'll review your debt situation as well we often then may refer into rob's team for any employment matters that may have led to you to need a food bank voucher so so i always think that's a good example of something that cut you come in for something that's quite simple but actually it can take you down so many different avenues. So that's our, our bread and butter service, um, which is integrated with our core service at the moment. You will have, may have seen in the news this week that we've helped as many people in the last 12 weeks as we have in a, the last year, which is huge. So um, our, our 87 volunteers, our 10 staff, and obviously the trustees have absolutely rolled our sleeves up to make sure that we can deliver for our organization, uh, for our communities in a time of crisis. So I think that's just been absolutely superb. And um, so as I thank the people last week, I'll thank you all on the call today for your involvement in that, which is brilliant. We also have projects coming up. We've got home visitors. So people who can go to vulnerable people's homes, people who may not be able to either phone us or go out um, to our offices. We've got an office in uh, Wokingham Town Centre at Waterford House. And we have an office in Woodley as well in Headley Road by the Lidl and next to Woodley Library. Um, we also do things like mental health first aid training. We're training all of our team later this year on mental health first aid as well to be able to support people. So we have lots of different things that the organization can do, but our bread and butter is we are a helpline. We are a focal point that people can come to if they need any advice and support on any range of issues. And, and Rob, I think this came up when you were talking, but Tracy has talked about um, on social media, a lot of people talking about employment matters and people who respond tend to mention a solicitor. And she's amazed uh, how few people realize that sitting device can assist. What would you say, Rob, on, on that situation there? Yeah, I mean, we are more than capable of providing uh, the same type of advice that a solicitor is able to do. So if we look across the, the types of cases we, uh, we deal with, obviously uh, grievances, unfair dismissals, discrimination, 2P transfers, whistleblowing public interest disclosure, equal pay. We, we have the capability to offer advice. Redu sorry, redundancy I'll throw in there because that's coming mm -hmm. through at the moment. Obviously, mm -hmm. furlough issues. You know, we, are, we do have that capability. Uh, we've got excellent internal resources in terms of uh, the information that we hold nationally in terms of things like AdvisorNet and the... Uh, uh, the databases, the information, uh, the knowledge banks that we can can access. So we're able to diagnose and identify uh, problems and provide advice. And as I've indicated, if it does need to go to litigation, people don't need to use a solicitor. The employment tribunal system is built on uh, what's called operating as litigants in person, by and large, uh, individuals representing themselves or using a friend or colleague. Uh, to to represent them, and we're able to facilitate that. So yes, uh, you don't need a uh, a solicitor, and we can you know do a lot of what a solicitor can do. Well, clearly, we aren't solicitors, and we can't you know we we can't provide everything that they can do, but we can go a long, long way in supporting clients. And I'm sure we will come on to talk about you know cases where we've been very successful in doing in doing that. Well, that's absolutely the next question. I think it's it's really good time. And so yeah, we'll start with, with Roz this time. But what is 
what what's one of your uh, let me ask two questions because i think it's, it's it'll help with the flow what's your favorite memory moment of being part of sitting's advice welcome gum and what is a standout case so that's the two questions to you all gosh you'll start with was oh thank you <laughs> um, <laughs> i i think that the two of the most uh, one of the most stand out is actually the council are talking to us about the council tax protocol that we're pre presenting to them and this covers things like uh, council tax arrears for people how how we work with people working out a payment plan and how we request to the council that if the, if the people are engaging with us the clients are engaging with us to hold off any enforcement procedures or any legal um, procedures against them um, that's probably the biggest one um, the, the, the other one um, I'm very passionate about um, is the emergency accommodation um, and the homelessness that is in Woking and Borough, um, where it's perceived as being a very wealthy area, and this doesn't happen in Wokingham. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with the council on that as well. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Roz. And Rob? Ooh, yeah. Um, in, in, in terms of uh, standouts, you know, or, you know, what you get from uh, uh, working for Citizens Advice, uh, to, to be quite honest, Jake, I think really, uh, I think the last two or three months have just been extraordinary. Uh, and the pride that we all share in having seen the organisation respond to the crisis in the community, uh, to uh, go that extra mile and to step up and simply being part of a team that is doing that has been immensely satisfying i think for for every uh, every one of us so that's for me you know that's what it, it's all about it's that uh, uh, it's being part of a team and helping the community and i think we've done that uh, significantly over the last couple of months so yeah that's that's, that's important um, um in in terms of of cases uh it's easy for me to focus on uh, big wins where we've been and one that sticks out in mind probably the biggest win we had was uh a couple of years ago supporting a client with a race discrimination case that went all the way to uh, a tribunal fought all the way uh, obviously against uh, solicitors we're always up against uh, mm -hmm. uh, solicitors but that was a case that we won and we won 105,000 pounds for the the client which was an extraordinary uh, uh, result but it does show and coming back to this this solicitor's point if we've got a if, if we've got fundamentally a strong case we're able to to get it to a, a to result uh you know however good the other side is they can't make a if we've got a good case they can't make it a bad case so you know we are capable of um, of doing that so in terms of a, a standout result that to me was it just demonstrated uh if we could we can go all the way having said that mm -hmm. most of our cases we settle on route we never get we never get that uh uh, we never get to uh, to tribunal, but where we do, we have had a couple of very big wins. Brilliant, definitely. That sounds great. And it is because I, I use obviously a lot of your cases when we are certainly trying to get funding. Um, but it, it is that issue, isn't it? Because I, I remember when I've used the food bank voucher one where they've, they've needed the food bank voucher and they've walked away a couple of months later with yeah. a payout because of the work that you've done. But the risk is obviously. That that's not that's not obviously something no. that we can just make happen. That's because of no. and someone's put about justice there. That that is because someone has faced issues there, and then with your support, they've yes. got absolutely what they were entitled to. Yeah, uh, I mean that is the thing. Uh, you know, I could I've got a list here of of uh, settlements that we've over the last twelve months. You know, uh, a dozen big settlements that we've managed to. Uh, uh, to negotiate, but obviously, yeah. To me, that just shows, in a sense, the sense of injustice because we've only won those because somebody's done something yeah. wrong. But it does show yeah. if yeah. somebody has been fundamentally uh, aggrieved through the uh, the legal process that we can can support them. I'd also like to contrast that by saying, you know, that's not the only satisfaction we give. I mean, some people just come in to, in a sense, for us to tell them that they don't have a case in law. And often it's for us to empathise with them and realise mm -hmm. that they have actually been really badly treated. But unfortunately, that does not translate into a legal claim. They might not have two years' service for a uh, for a, for an unfair dismissal uh, uh, a case, for instance. So, in which case, we're able, in that case, to simply explain that whilst they have been 
unjustly treated, it doesn't translate into a legal claim. And those, you know, in a sense, that's just as, you know, it's satisfying for that person to know that, yes, they've explored it and they know now that they don't have a claim and can actually move on with their their lives or, you know, yeah, uh, the, the, the other advisors can now help them with benefits. We can push them in the direction of thinking about new employment, et cetera, et cetera. And let's move, move on. Yeah. I think that's a really, really good example. Thank you for that. Sarah, again, you're new, but I would certainly hope you've had lots of exposure. Shall we absolutely, say. absolutely. Um, uh, and and uh, I, I, mean, I guess, first of all, I would echo what, what Rob said in terms of, um, you know, the, the way that everyone has stepped up over the last, what is it now, three months. Um, and, uh, you know, the number of conversations and messages I've exchanged with some of our volunteers saying, actually, uh, you know, to be part of something at a time like this in particular, uh, you know, they, they really appreciate that that opportunity um, to, to know that we're making a difference to our communities. And I would say that about myself as well. So, you know, there's that sort of general uh, piece. I think um, something that stands out for me uh, personally, something I've done is um, a couple of months ago when I signed um, our Help to Claim contract extension. So um, Help to Claim being the National Citizens Advice uh, Service to, to support people with their universal credit um, applications and so on. And obviously that's something we've been doing um, for a while. And then the extension of the contract came up. Um, and from a trustee's point of view, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've got to make sure that we're, we're legally compliant in everything we do. And so whilst, you know, signing a contract is not in itself a particularly exciting um, <laughs> activity, um, what it represents is huge and it means we can carry on helping people in that particular area. So I think for me that that was quite a, a big uh, moment. To, I didn't quite have to get out a you know a special pen because of course it's all done virtually. But but nevertheless, it's sort of it is what it represents is is important. Definitely, absolutely. Thank you, Sarah and Persona. Yeah, as I said, uh, uh, you know, since the lockdown, I was uh, doing a bit of triaging as well, just helping someone with uh, you know food supply for that evening or just the following day. It was a uh, you know uh, I thought it's a great success because uh, you know, no one can imagine uh, suffering with uh, not having something to eat in the house. Mm -hmm. That must be really difficult. And just you know um, maybe sometime you know recently help someone to register in Gov UK or um, help with the uh, medication supply. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were doing the emergency request as well, so which was a good one. And as an assessor, uh, there was quite a few, but uh, probably not, not something particular coming in my head. But I remember one afternoon we had a client, uh, just he came to us uh, with a water bill saying that, oh, he can't afford paying the bill. And just uh, talking through you know, different uh, scenarios and asking him uh, uh, different issues about issues and realized he has a, a big debt so uh, then um, I took the details of the debt as well, then I realized uh, uh, there were so many um, uh, issues he was facing financially and uh, realized he could be eligible for benefits as well. Um, mm -hmm. After I went through uh, different questions and realized he could. So uh, that day evening, uh, we tried to help him um, uh, the, the emergency issues he was facing on that day, uh, for example, that water bill he, which he couldn't uh, pay, and uh, we could ha we helped him to sort it out that he will not uh, disconnected with the water supply, and uh, booked an appointment with the advisor which who can help uh, in debt uh, with the debt issues. So I think uh, uh, that was a I, I'm not able to see I, I wouldn't be able to see what happens later, but uh, yeah, he had been helped through very well. I think. I think it's a good example because obviously that's about someone's come in about a really crisis issue, but you've helped them to unpick all of the other problems that are with mm -hmm. that. Because if we only dealt with that problem, then there's going to be so many other problems that are going to come down the line as well. Mm -hmm. What's your favourite memory or moment though as well of sitting's advice? Oh, for me? Yeah. The persona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every day is memorable, I think. <laughs> That's good. That's a good answer. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. And the uh, chocolates from you. <laughs> <laughs> During That's the long run. we can offer every week, though. But... <laughs> yeah, we can. Sorry. We no, that's good. Thank you, Persona. And Nikki, same two questions for you. 
Um, I think in Obviously, terms you won't deal with cases, but yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but for me, in terms of successes, it's it's actually looking at the panel here. Um, that I'm able to help all volunteers and support them at some point or another. And working with Roz, we work together because Roz helps me with all the trainees, supporting them and ensuring that they they, they get the support that they need. Um, Rob with the um, employment team, helping him put his employment team together, which makes him very happy. Yep. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I, I love seeing the results of it all. And Sarah, you know, you did, I did your induction and it was just great to see you as part of the team now as a trustee and Prasanna obviously um, helping you through now on to the advisor uh, learning path uh, being an assessor for, you know, for, uh, for a good amount of time and now moving you to the advisor level in support of that so and it's great to see that the volunteers that start in the induction a lot of them do find it overwhelming sometimes and think, oh, but we can't do this. And But then you see them several months later and uh, I'll go up to them and say that, you're my trainee, but they look very professional because they, they are dealing with the calls, they're seeing clients confidently, they're getting successes. So for me, their success, and it sounds a bit corny, is my success. So um, yeah, so um, it's a very satisfying role, I have to say. And in terms of most memorable, um, probably would have to be the, the royal visit in last September. I'm not, I'm not a royalist or anything, and I just thought, okay, you know, I'll, I'll attend. But it was such a good day just because, again, it was all about the volunteers and uh, how, um, um, you know, that they were celebrated on that day as well. So, yeah, and I'm looking yeah. forward to another one. <laughs> well, we'll see about that one. <laughs> yeah. <But> that's great. <laughs> Let me ask uh, a last question then before we wrap up. Um, it, it might sound a bit complicated, but it's, it makes sense in my head because obviously we go back to the summary of what this conversation is about. So the question to you all is, what would you say that Sitton's Advice is? What is Sitton's Advice? But also, how would you describe your role within that? Gosh, and I'm just going to throw that to anyone that wants to then go first. Gosh. So obviously this is to the to the community, yeah. this is to the people watching. So what is Sitting Device? How would you describe it? And what's your role within that? Well, I, I yeah, I mean I, I see uh, Sitting's Advice being uh, an important safety net uh, for you know uh, the community, uh, for people faced with you know uh, problems that they can't solve. And you know, we are there to help with all of those situations. And that's so. That's to me. It's this safety net idea uh, that nobody has to do it on their own. We are there to help. Uh, and I think what most well, what I see myself for is as an advocate for for people. Uh, you know, if they come with an issue, we're able to engage with that issue and articulate it, and in a sense, either help them fight that battle or 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 stand alongside them whilst they try to resolve that uh, issue so it is it's being that advocate and companion that's how i see myself operating brilliant that's great thank you who wants um, to go next i'll go next um i i think i see citizen advice as um somewhere where you can get and this is the buzzwords we use confidential impartial advice and and the impartiality i think is the key key thing we're not associated with or um, with Wokenham Borough Council or any other governing body apart from National Citizens Advice. So our advice is totally impartial and um, it's not sort of um, pressured advice either. Um, and as Rob says, giving people the advice, you can see them move on. And this is another buzzword, we empower people yeah. to take things in their own hands and not take things in their own hands, to, to help themselves and one of the um, things that we're told when we're talking to people whether we're doing assessment advice research and campaigns have you moved the person forward have they take that mm -hmm. little step forward down life's path you know if you think of life it's a very long path people go da, 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 da. and sometimes people just stop and they're going down in a hole and if you can just take them out of that hole and move them on a little bit that's a job well done Absolutely. So how would you describe your role in that? Um, I do the assessment supervisor where um, I'm helping. Uh, I am help the assessors. The assessors will take the phone call or when we did face-to-face, 
talk to people face to face and I would back them up if they needed any help with any information they were sending. Where relevant, I would send information out by email or, or text, um, sometimes via letter. Um, research and campaigns, um, it's, as I said before, identifying areas, particularly locally, where there's problems, um, whether it's benefits, housing, um, communications, debt, and it's the individuals having problems. And we collate all this information on our um, database called Casebook with the client's permission. Um, with all clients, we have to have permission to, to take the information and certain types of information, whether we can contact them again to discuss this or um, make them to be part of a panel. Um, we click this information and then that goes automatically to national citizens advice and then once again it moves on to the government where relevant absolutely brilliant okay who wants to go next yeah, i'll go next okay. um yeah. just get on with it <laughs> um so the way how i see for um citizen, uh, citizens advice for um people to go to that actually they'll receive genuine advice and help because the, the the people are providing the advice and uh, the comfort at times who are listening ear are volunteers so they have volunteered to be that person to to go to and they're not forced to be there and uh, they don't have to be there so that's the key thing is that there is someone waiting to help you because they genuinely want to help um, and then my contribution towards that is that I actually recruit those volunteers and there is something in all those uh, volunteers that when they express an interest is to identify actually what, what it is that they can bring to the service and what we can give back to them, train them up, get them the confidence and get them to that point where they can offer that advice. William, thank you, Nikki. Persona, I think you were going to go next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I agree with everyone else. And uh, yes, we are the first point of, uh, we can be the first point of contact with any issue. I think it can be anything just, uh, you know, annoying neighbor from, from an annoying neighbor to complex employment issue, which Rob deals with. So yes, uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm part of the organization. And at the same time, I learned a lot uh, through learning. Um, uh, as, this, as I say, we are very confidential and uh, uh, impartial. Uh, uh, as an assessor, I could deal with the very sim as simple as that if I take an employment example. Uh, there could be a, just a, um, a client may come to me just asking me, um, just explain me the pay slip is not very clear and uh, what is my eligibility <laughs> of uh, the paid holiday. Mm. Or it could be something uh, very complicated, uh, uh, discrimination issue yeah. or something, uh, case in tribunal or court case or things like that. So luckily I work at the same, on the same day as Rob works. So I, I can quickly go to Rob and ask, <laughs> oh, do you think, Rob, is it, uh, you think we should take up this uh, issue and uh, take it further? So yeah. yeah, he is there all the time to <laughs> help us. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And- uh, mm. That's brilliant. Okay, yeah. thank you, Persona, that's Fab. And Sarah. So, um, uh, yes, all of the above. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I, I guess I think something that's really important um, uh, is that it, we're not about telling people what to do. It is about, as, as others have said, you know, it's about listening to them. It's about exploring all the different complex things that might be going on um, and just helping them see that they have options um, and what, what kind of advice is out there, what support might be there um, and really helping them to decide, you know, each individual is the expert in themselves. So actually they know what they need. Um, they don't necessarily know what's out there. So um, I think it's, it's important that we're providing that service to, to kind of signpost people and if we don't know, we probably know someone who does. So we can also um, signpost to other organisations that might be able to help. Um, I guess my role as a trustee within that or our role as a board of trustees is, is what we're about to do in a couple of weeks time, actually, is to be always looking and thinking about what are the issues that are coming up within our communities at the moment. We're going to attempt to do a little bit of, of sort of horizon scanning or whatever you call it, kind of looking into the future as to what we think might come up more, um, you know, given and uh, the, the, the current pandemic and the impact on the economy and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we need to do that because then we can think, okay, what do we as a charity need to 
be offering what do our volunteers and advisors and everybody need to be learning about maybe if there's something that we think might be quite new coming up what what how do we make sure that we're ready and we can provide um, as much of that um, signposting and advice as, as, as we possibly can so at the moment certainly that that's what I'd say my role is as a trustee Brilliant. That's great. And I think the same for, for, for me. As I think the, the, the One Front Order has shown that we can be that go-to charity. So a lot of the cases that we deal with at the moment are referred straight back out. So we're really liaising with lots of other fantastic charities across Wokingham, yeah. where our passion has been the we don't want people having to fall through the cracks to figure out what's going on, what yeah. they're suitable for, what they're eligible for. We can be that charity that can help people as was I said, found that way forward. That's absolutely our goal. Every interaction should move people forward. But as Sarah said, it should be to equip people with the information that they need to take the action themselves. And then where they can't do that, we have specialists, we have home visitors, we have others that can help people who are a bit more vulnerable. Uh, and, and thankfully, my role within that is to just do things like this. It's to champion the team that we have because we are only successful because the team are resilient, passionate, dedicated enough to do that work. I do believe it could have been very easy for us 12 weeks ago to say, this is all a bit too difficult. Let's just figure it all out over the next couple of weeks and stop, you know? And we really, really could have done that. That's not just a, a dramatic statement, but actually we had no pause in service at all. Everyone was prepared to just roll the sleeves up, work from home, work from dodgy dining room chairs that I'm sitting on with a very bad back because that was what we felt we had to do to deliver the service. So as Sarah said, what will be interesting, and, and, and Rob and, and Ros and obviously Nikki as well have been part of these conversations about how we return to a, a form of service in the future in our offices, in our communities, uh, and that information will all be going to the trustee boards that Sarah was then talking about in the future. Well, as in the future, it's later this month, isn't it? But the future yeah. seems to be. Um, to really pull together all of that information and make sure that we can deliver as an effective service for our communities as possible. Um, so I hope that this has been useful for people to, to watch and just get that, hopefully, a little bit of a better understanding of what we do, but also the different functions and the roles that we have. Uh, and Ros, I'd obviously forgot, because I have a terrible memory that your sister was one of the first 10 volunteers that we had. Um, and we'll be talking to the town mayor for Wokingham, um, uh, Tony Lash, on Tuesday, who will be doing a, a chat with us, uh, because they set us up. It was Wokingham Town Council in 1977 that had enough of not having a sitting device in the borough, so they set it up. And your sister was one of 10 people that decided to volunteer and deliver that service from um, the town hall, which is great, and then you're here 43, 44 <laughs> years on. So that's brilliant to see. Okay. So thank you very much, Roz, Rob, Sarah, Prasara, okay. and Nikki. Um, and you. I said, hopefully that's been thank useful you. for people. So thank you thank all you. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.